Kurakoto, called Jeremy Ho, and this is Tasman Skies. What I wanted to demonstrate here was how to assemble a Global Media Network's Raspberry Pi Meteor system camera. One of the first things you want to do is to remove the IR filter on the lens. So first of all, unscrew the lens from the mounting plate and put it aside so that it's safe. Now remove the sticker that protects the IR filter and you'll see a slightly blue coloured piece of glass or plastic underneath. We're going to pop that out, use some safety glasses for protection and then just pop that blue filter out. It'll probably break. And then what you're going to want to do is to pick out each one of the shards with a pair of tweezers. Take care to make sure that you have removed all of the pieces of infrared filter because you don't want any of this to be rattling around and getting on the sensor later on. Once you are very sure that you've removed all pieces of the filter, we're going to cut the little plastic nubbins off the bottom of the mount. These locate the mount against certain sensors, but our mount needs to sit flush against the camera, and so we need to cut off these little nubbins. Cut them off flush, in fact you might want to angle them slightly to make sure that no, nothing sticks out proud. Put the lens back in the holder and put it away somewhere safe for now. The camera sensor comes in two circuit boards connected by a thin piece of ribbon. Separate the two pieces by carefully separating the plastic clips. The camera sensor has been protected by a small piece of Kapton tape. Carefully remove this, making sure that you don't end up touching the sensor at this point onwards. You don't want to get the sensor dirty, which is the reason why I'm wearing gloves here. Position the lens over the sensor so that the mounting holes line up with those on the camera board. Find the two screws to fix the camera to the lens and screw them through from the back side. Make sure the ribbon cables haven't dislodged and then clip the board back into place. You'll notice here that I have spray painted the front of the camera mounting plate black. If you do that it just reduces some reflections internally. Now find the four screws that you can use to mount the camera to the mounting plate. I struggled to find the right screws, but I had some long screws that had a strange sort of hex head. They were intended as being some sort of spacer, and so I used those, and I used another piece of spacer to help screw them into place.
if you've actually got proper screws it'll make this job so much easier remove the front glass element of the security camera housing to give it a good clean. It just seemed to come out of the factory, particularly grotty. The front element seems to come out of the factory quite dirty, so you're going to need to make sure you give it a thorough clean. I probably wouldn't do the sealing job the same way again. I thought I could minimise the amount of sealant being used by applying a small amount of sealant to the back of the housing so that it would make right up against the front lens element. This probably isn't necessary because if you do it the normal way and just run a bead of silicon around the edge of the window, you're not going to find that that silicon bead vignettes the view of the lens anyway. So. This just made it a little bit harder for me to put the lens in later on. So I probably wouldn't suggest doing what I did in this particular instance. Making sure that it is nice and clean. You might need to make sure that it's been given a good rub down with a microfiber cloth. I'm having to be particularly careful in putting this window back in place because of the silicon that I've run around the front of the housing. As I say, I wouldn't do this again in the same way. I'd just run a bead of silicon around the front of the window. It's not going to be in the way of the lens. Tighten up the screws that hold the housing's window in place. This is a bit of an awkward process, which is another reason to do the siliconing later on. You don't have to worry about accidentally smearing silicon onto the window. You'll need a stubby screwdriver to get in and tighten up these screws and they're quite awkward to get at. Another tip for you is to once again not copy me. Do not fit the mounting bracket to the camera housing while you're doing all of this. Just fit that on later. Add four dobs of silicon to the screws in the front of the security camera housing, making sure that you don't get any of that silicon onto the window. Once again, now I would recommend that you leave the silicon job right to the very end rather than doing it at this particular point in the build process. Now you want to get the focus of the lens approximately right before you put it into the housing because you want to make sure that the lens isn't too far back from the housing so it doesn't vignette. But you also don't want to have it so close to the window that when you adjust the focus the, you run out of room. So there's a separate set of instructions for how to go about doing the focusing adjustments and setting the exposure and you want to do that now before you fit it into the housing.
now you've screwed the lens in so approximately the right length you'll be able to get the uh, camera as close to the security camera housing window as possible and use the two screws to mount the plate in place there are two channels in the bottom of the housing and that is what the screws are going to screw into I haven't shown it here but the PoE cable for the camera has already been threaded up through the security camera housing and has been plugged into the camera board and then slide the camera mounting plate up uh, very close to the front window try and make the camera square in the housing so that it isn't angled to the left or to the right provide some strain relief for the power over ethernet network cable I've used a 3mm zip tie through one of the slots in the mounting plate to provide some strain relief for the cable I marked off four holes that need to be drilled out to mount it onto the wall of my garage and pre-drilled them so that nothing would split when I put the bolts in place to hold it up because of the angle that I wanted to point the camera up at I actually ended up adding an additional block to space the camera off this board I use a little bit of extra silicon in the holes just to provide a little bit of extra protection both for the screws and the board that it was being screwed into. I drilled a hole in this feet to get the cable into the house and ran that cable back across to the camera. There is a waterproof connector that fits over the cable to lock the network cable in place at the camera. While it has some waterproofing measures it's a good idea to wrap this connector in self amalgamating tape to make sure that water really doesn't get inside this connector.
some of the power over ethernet cables have a second level connector for 12 volts which may be used for a fan or heater inside the camera you should wrap the end of that in self amalgamating tape as well I poked the network cable up into this feet and was able to fish it out from the inside later That's the angle that I have the camera pointing up into the sky. Note the block that offsets it from the side to get the angle up so that I don't end up looking into the gutter. This brush plate provides access for the network cable from the roof space down into my garage without having anything looking too ugly, although there are a couple of holes in my setting that I now need to spackle up because I made some mistakes. The blue network cable runs down to a power over ethernet 48 volts injector and that in turn is connected to the Raspberry Pi. This Raspberry Pi runs the RMS software which is the brains of the operation. And that's it. That's the assembly of my RMS camera. Ka kere anō e